teachers of Reddit, what is the most thoughtful thing a student has ever done or said? It was after my oldest son died unexpectedly. I had returned to work, but it was really hard. You don't want to fall apart in front of middle school students. You also don't want to lie to them and tell them everything is fine. Anyway, this one boy began stopping by my classroom every morning before the first bell rang. He wouldn't come in the door. He just poked his head in and said good morning, asked how I was, then left. This went on for a couple of weeks. One day, I was having a particularly hard day, missing my boy, this kid, Steven. He stopped by like always, poked his head in and said good morning and asked how I was. I just looked up at him and he must have seen the pain in my face because he stepped in the door. He cleared his throat and sort of blushed and looked at the ground. And then he said, you know, Mrs. Diggy rules, it's okay for you to be sad, we understand, it's okay. And then he left, really filled my heart. I wrote a note to his parents and mailed it home, commending them on raising such a wonderful boy. Simple words can mean so much. Hope everything is easier now. On the last day of my student teaching in an inner city school, one of the little girls in my class handed me a small box. I got you a present she said. I opened up the box and it was a used hair curler probably took it from her mom. She said she gave it to me because of my curly hair. She wrote all over the box I love you you're the best teacher ever she wanted to give me something so badly but definitely couldn't afford anything. I started crying on the spot. I'll never forget that. I had an at risk who struggled his entire high school career. It was my first year so naturally I'm in the I can save everyone mode and I tried my hardest. Talked with him after class. Made sure he had his things in order. A mentor of sorts. A few months into the semester the principal comes up to me and says you know. Mr. John Goodman for president. Blabla came to me and told me he knows what he wants to be when he gets out of here. He told the principal that he wanted to be a teacher. A teacher just like Mr. John Goodman for president. That hit me pretty hard. And on his graduation day he posted a picture of us on his Twitter and tagged me saying thank you for being the best teacher I've ever had. I'm not crying. I got the letter from a student I barely knew at the end of the year. In it she said I had inspired her to work with disabled children because she watched me interact with some of the profoundly disabled students in our school. She said your patience and joy made me realize what is important in life. I had no idea she was even aware I spent time with those students. That's just plain awesome. And it's amazing how one can inspire someone else without even noticing. I work in a very low income neighborhood of an inner city. The struggles we face daily are challenging. To put it nicely, another way to describe it is, teachers who truly aren't there for the kids and to make a major difference often don't last till December. At the end of my first year, a student gave me a small glass owl with a grad cap that reads the tassel is worth the hassle. I keep it on my desk and whenever I'm having a really bad day, it breathes new life into me. These kids really are worth it. That's amazing. My last day of student teaching. One of my at risk students came up to me after my last class and said thank you for watching over me. There's a kid at the school I work at. He's in first grade. And while I don't specifically know his home situation, he's not one of the kids I work with. It's not hard to tell that his home life isn't the best. Every other Friday my school does popcorn sales, where kids can buy a bag of popcorn for 50 cents. This boy, he usually doesn't get popcorn, but one time he was able to bring a whole dollar and get two bags. I think that's the only time I've ever seen him get popcorn too. Well on that day, one of his classmates lost her popcorn money. Without even a second thought, he offered her one of his two bags. It's a much smaller gesture than some of the others in this thread, but given that both kids involved were six and the one giving the money is one of the last kids I would have expected to do that. He's not particularly generous normally. It felt like a really thoughtful moment to me. The poor give more percentage of their own wealth. Church offerings for example. I think it's because people who never had anything know what it is to not have anything. Two years ago, a good friend's brother was murdered. One of my students asked me if she could deliver dinner to my friend and her family. She ended up bringing over a three course meal for them that she'd prepared herself. The next year, another teacher at my school had an infant daughter who was critically ill. This same student started a collection for this teacher while he was out on leave, 
and she ended up raising over a thousand dollars for him. She's one of a kind. A student once wrote a memoir for an assignment containing mentions of how she and her best friend had plans to kill themselves. I instantly walked it down to the office and reported it. The counselor called home to talk to mom and dad. Fast forward a week to parent-teacher conferences. Her parents walk in pee off that I had broken their daughter's trust and angrily questioned why I would do such a thing. It's their own daughter. For goodness sake. The student was also very upset at me. A little over a year that student came back to visit me. She emotionally thanked me for being the only one who cared and even though she hated me for months. She knew that I saved her life because she was actually planning on doing it. I didn't even know how to react. She still visits me twice a year and gives me updates about her life. I can see why the student would find it a huge breach of trust at that moment. But you definitely did the right thing. Not a teacher, but my brother is, and he's told me several stories. The most thoughtful thing he's told me about, in my mind, was a student from the previous year bringing him flowers and a bottle of wine on his anniversary, which the student remembered that he forgot the year before. I was student teaching and we had a lockdown. I was in a high school classroom and the threat was a man wandering around with a gun and yelling on our campus. I was terrified. I was only in my fourth week of student teaching and still quite unsure of myself and my teaching ability. This unfortunately happened the one day my cooperating teacher got sick. So I had a sub who was equally just as scared and didn't know the procedures. I had all my students get into a corner of the room and sit down. I locked the doors, turned off the lights and was scared shitless. Mind you, I am only a 5 feet 0 woman who was 21 at the time, I am now 22, and about 118 pounds soaking wet, I have never been more frightened than hearing the door handle jiggle to our classroom, I was brave enough to stand between the door and my students, I had my hand on the door frame and my other hand signaling the SHHH signal to my students who were about 20 feet away sitting down in silence, I remember my knees shaking as I stood there, I didn't even breathe. It must have only been a second but the jiggling stopped. I still stood frozen for another minute or two after that. After a few more minutes I hear the quiet shuffling of feet, and one of my students who was sitting in the back comes and stands beside me in absolute silence. It was just myself and him. He put his hand on my shoulder. We didn't move from that position until another 15 minutes, in which the guy was taken down. It felt like lifetimes passed. It was so simple, but him placing himself beside me and giving me courage and standing in the face of fear has never left me. It will always be the single most thoughtful thing a student has ever done and it was done without even a word. I honestly tear up whenever I think about it. When I finished my student teaching I gave him a giant hug and told him thank you. He was known as the rambunctious, goofy guy in the classroom I always had to shut up or yell at so he would stop talking over instruction. I had never before seen that kind of gentle, kind of courage from him. He was always full of laughter and jokes, and sometimes got sent to the office for pulling pranks. I'll never forget him. My first year teaching a 9th grader told me he'd take a bullet for me. Your story brought it back up, vividly. Lockdowns are so terrifying, and I've never been through one as awful as yours. Gosh, so glad it ended well. I'm a student, not a teacher, but I think this story fits here. I went to a community college a few years ago and my English professor had some type of disorder that made her spine neck to cause her great amounts of pain sometimes. To the point where she would wear a neck brace during class occasionally. She bought a custom chair that helped with her condition and she would often spend the entire lecture sitting in that chair. Anyway, her classroom was on the third floor of a building with a very bad elevator. Always slow constantly broke down. Because of this, she often had to take the stairs which was very hard for her. So me and a few of the stronger guys in our class would get to the room a few minutes early, bring her chair downstairs to the front of the building, then carry her upstairs to the classroom. I had a really rough day and all my poor kiddos knew it. I was trying so hard to not cry at work but it must have shown in my face how bogged down I was. First year full time teaching. Some of my kids came in the next day with chocolate, tea, and other snacks for me. I could tell one of them had just raided the pantry at home and it was the sweetest thing. I love these kids. A similar thing happened to one of my teacher friends. 
Her very beloved dog died and she told her classes what happened after breaking down in class. She said she expected them to be shoots about it, as teens often are, but instead the next day a bunch of them bought her condolence cards and brought her lunch and Starbucks, and just gave her hugs and sympathy throughout the day. Obligatory not a teacher, but I did tutor at a local prison a couple of summers ago. One of the women I helped in math told me towards the end that I was the best teacher she had ever had and that my patience and willingness gave her hope to succeed once she got out. My mom was a remedial English teacher. One of her students was a recent immigrant from China whose intelligence was high but English language skills weren't. My mom is dyslexic and knows what it's like to be treated like an idiot unjustly. She did after school one on ones with this student and helped her language improve enough to be placed in the standard English courses. At the end of the year, the student painted my mom some watercolor Chinese calligraphy which she still has hanging on her wall. Your mom sounds like a really good person. I had a student, whom I only had taught for 10 weeks and partway through the spring semester until the end of the year, give me a book on mathematics with a handwritten note on the inside, saying thank you for being the first math teacher that wasn't just boring and actually made math interesting like it's supposed to be. He was a star pupil, knew everything, and had never before had a teacher that made class fun for the smart kids. I am an American teaching in the Middle East. I grew up in a small, white, Christian area in the Midwest. I am now living in a densely populated, incredibly diverse, Muslim country. To top things off, this is my first real teaching job. Safe to say I am fairly uncomfortable, stressed, and overwhelmed most of the time. Just a few weeks ago, I was sitting in my classroom during a planning hour and was listening to Christmas music. I was missing the slow paced, sit by the fire, white Christmas vibes of my hometown, my friends, and my family, real nostalgic. A student walks into my room, sees me a bit down, and hurriedly leaves. The next day, I walk into my classroom and I see an envelope on my desk. It's a Christmas card, signed by the same student who caught me missing home. It was exactly what I needed. It brought such a smile to my face and she asked for nothing in return. She didn't even bring attention to herself when I saw her next. Now I always tell the story of a little Muslim girl spreading authentic joy, regardless of our differences in background and upbringing, sheds a different light on how we oftentimes view our differences. I'm not crying. I was a substitute teacher for a little while, and it's always amazing to have the kids ask you if you're coming back tomorrow. It's especially nice if the teacher warns you how crap they usually are for subs and they end up being perfect little angels for you. I think the best compliment I ever received was a thank you letter from a first grader that contained a number of math problems he made up because he was so amazed with my addition skills when I was teaching a math unit. I remember asking a sub for him to come back on the day after my birthday as it was on a Sunday that year. I'm not a teacher but I work with middle school students, after school program, and one of my students left me a note that read, thank you so much for being, kind, sweet, and someone that looks like me. She was a little black girl with sandy hair like me. It really hit home because when I first started working there I knew she reminded me of me at her age. It was really sweet. I was having lunch with some of my kindergartners, and they were talking about a boy who had been having some behavior problems that day. One kid said I don't like him, he is a bad kid. One of my favorite little girls, this super precocious, tiny kid with huge glasses that made her look like a little owl said in the most matter of fact voice he's not bad, he's just learning. It just warmed my heart so much. I firmly believe that there are no bad kids, just kids who are still learning. I can't think of a specific example that stands out, but I just spent a few minutes reflecting on all the wonderful little things my students have said and done over the years. I've only been teaching for about 4 years so far, but I've seen how even the most disruptive and immature 9th grader can be profoundly kind. It's nice to think about those moments, no matter how fleeting they may be, between all the bottle flipping and asking if I like trap music. I have had students draw me pictures, give me small gifts, and it is so sweet. Believe me, 
I so appreciate it. It's really cool, though. Seeing kids who you think really can't stand you actually open up to you. I got pregnant this year, and it was surprising seeing some of the cool kids, who can tend to be attention seekers and aren't shy about hating my class, were actually the ones who treated my pregnancy with discretion and didn't shout it out to the whole class. One of these students even said, Oh wow, you drink a lot of coffee. It must be really hard for you to cut back. She was the only one who noticed such a small detail and felt sympathy for me. Once upon a time, I was a student teacher. There was a boy in one of the classes that needed help every day. He would raise his hand for help, and I would go to help him, and he'd say no, not you. I don't want your help. It was like this every day for three months. He would ask for help. I would offer help. He would tell me to go away so the other teacher could help him. On my last day at that school, I asked the students to write a note saying why I was a bad teacher, or why I was a good teacher. This same boy drew a picture of himself telling me to go away, and me walking away from him. And under the picture it said Mr. Rest equals Rust is a good teacher, because he never gave up. I found out later that he was a foster kid, and my last day at the school was also his last day, and he was moved to another family and another school the next day. We were both temporary. Frick this is beautiful. Not my personal experience but my professors. She has this writing program for cadets and in one of the journals she read that one of the male cadets wishes that his future wife and mother of his children would be just like her. Even I was touched reading that. We were reading an Emily Dickinson poem, Hope is a thing with feathers, and my student was having a deep emotional reaction to it, and he says, I don't know miss, this really hit home, it makes me feel like I do in church, I really enjoyed hearing that. It's cool to see kids having a deep emotional connection, it means that thing means something to them. I live overseas teaching English. I teach a class of teenagers once a week for 3 hours, I'd only been teaching them for a couple of months when my birthday came up. They knew it was my first birthday overseas without my family and they came into the classroom super early on the Saturday morning to set up a birthday party for me with snacks, soda and a cake. That's great. I was working at an after school program for 3rd 6th graders. I had one boy who routinely had behavior issues. He was just a really difficult kid to deal with sometimes, but I thought he was a great kid. One day after class, he told me that his dad was abusing him. In the next few days, he was really emotional, and went to see the school counselor almost every day. He hated having the other kids ask about why he was upset, so I'll let him stay inside during recess with me. We would play with Legos and talk and color. About two weeks after I had to go to my grandmother's funeral, and I was frantically briefing my sub on what to do with him, to be nice to him, but he also really desperately needs boundaries. He does best when he feels needed so give him a job, etc. I spent the whole trip worrying about him. When I came back, he gave me a picture of a Kingdra that he drew and framed on black paper. He knew water types were my favorite, and thanked me for taking the time to care about him. It just melted my heart. I still have it in a box next to my bed to this day. I'm from the Midwest and I love steak and shake. Particularly the eggnog milkshakes around Christmas. The first year I moved to California I missed the simple seasonal things like eggnog milkshakes. I told my class, 8th grade algebra, that Christmas was not the same without eggnog milkshakes. Little did I know one of my students moms was a manager at Jack in the Box and they have seasonal milkshakes. The next afternoon her mom brought her lunch to school, and she came by my class and gave me an eggnog milkshake. It was delicious. That's so adorable. I taught in an autism classroom, and lockdown drills were always really tough on my students because most of them couldn't sit still or understand the purpose of the drill. During one drill, one of my loudest, most hyperactive students grabbed a laptop and loaded up a YouTube video of a Korean flight safety video. Something about that video must have been calming, because all of my students were glued to the screen watching the video on repeat. It was the calmest lockdown drill I've ever experienced with them. One boy observed once, they think you don't get mad, but you do get mad. You just make yourself laugh about it. I read it as insightful, too. That's awesome that they can recognize you dealing with anger in a constructive way. That's a great example you're setting. 
when I told a class I was leaving my body to medical science when I die to be used as a cadaver in medical school a 7th grader told me I want to be a doctor, maybe I will see you again one day, one of the best days of my teaching career. A kid gave me a card, it said, I see God through you, I've never been really open about my faith, obviously, since I taught public school and it isn't appropriate, but this really touched my heart and made me think I was doing something right. I always love the students wholeheartedly because I think that's what and who a true Christian is. This is all my personal opinion but being a Christian is how you live your life, not how you show your faith for all to see. A silent prayer holds as much meaning as worship at church. It's your relationship with God, and the morals you live your life by, not those you impose on others. Not a teacher, but a relevant story. My senior year of high school, my Italian teacher's brother was shot and killed. She flew to the Dominican Republic to be with her family for a fairly extended period of time. She was back in class 4, and I crap you not, one day before her father had a heart attack and died. Back to the doctor. She was back at school for the last 4 days of the year. She always brought her guitar to school. She would practice in her free periods, if I remember correctly, and one day one of the students brought his guitar and asked her to play. It made her smile, which is probably something she didn't do much that year. I've been teaching kindergarten for 4 years. My second year of teaching, I had a kid who was just the most empathetic kid in the world. He was cute as a button, and hilarious, and just the nicest kid. Still as he always says hi and gives me a hug when he sees me in the hallway. He could always sense when I was feeling stressed and would do something silly and make me laugh. One day he was pulling out his snack and goes watermelon in a sing song voice and starts rubbing his belly and dancing. One day, the girl he sat next to, who was another absolute angel, was having a bad day. Her mom had written me a note saying that she didn't sleep well because of her brother being sick with a cough, and was not her usual self. Midday, she just had an absolute meltdown because another kid took a pencil from her. Normally she would have not let it bother her, but it was just one of those days. She's sobbing, and I'm going to get another pencil for her and give her a hug. And before I can get there, this little guy is there with a the box of tissues, hugging his friend. They were both teeny little munchkins at the time, and it was by far the cutest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. It was amazing to see how a 5 year old could be so kind and caring to someone else. I had two different students in two different school years tell me I was going to be a good mom one day. That was extra special because I was going through infertility issues and previously miscarried. I will always remember that. I, of course, never shared that about myself, so hearing that made me happy. As an outgoing grade, the entire class filmed a video without me knowing. We frequently filmed class and individual projects, so it wasn't a big deal that they were asking permission to film in the hallway. That highlighted the reasons why they would miss my class and how much they appreciated me. Super super sweet who says 8th graders aren't delightful? I was placed in a middle school for my student teaching assignment. These kids were challenging, defiant, anti-authority, etc. Anyway, one day I was being observed by my supervisor from the college where I was getting my credential. The kids were being extra rowdy and disrespectful during the observation. They were having conversations and horsing around during my lesson. However, one of the toughest kids, who was also known to be in a gang, and sort of a leader among the group, was on his best behavior. He paid attention, participated, and ignored his friends. After my supervisor left, he then gave all his friends a bad time for acting up during the lesson. He told them something like, you know she was here to watch me. You. Right and shook his head like he was ashamed of their behavior. It still makes me tear up a little when I think about it. I remember in school we were super nervous when a teacher would get observed just for that reason. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
bye for now.